Dave here and I just saw the Peanuts movie. Now I haven't really brought this up much in videos before but Peanuts was a huge part of my childhood and one of the biggest early influences of my sensibilities. As a kid Charles Schultz was as much a hero to me as Walt Disney was, even more so at some points. Over 50 years of comic strips and countless hours of animation, Schultz created a world of happiness and heartbreak, of joy and sorrow, of optimism and existential dread in equal measure. And now that world has been brought to the big screen for a new generation, and I, for one, really enjoyed it. In fact, this is a controversial statement, but I really liked the look of the film. And yes, yes, I know, CGI is the great Satan and nothing good can ever come of it. Your childhood was better in two dimensions and black and white and without sound and when the film was hand cranked. But the thing is, as much as I love the classic Peanuts TV specials, I really never thought they looked all that much like Peanuts. They looked more like standard 60s TV animation. They were loaded with imperfections, of course, but they were different imperfections than the imperfections in Schultz's drawings. But the animation in the new movie uses the precision of CGI to attempt to replicate Schultz's shaky line work in a way that Melendez and Mendelssohn never could. And you could argue that meticulously recreating a flawed work is less pure than just creating a new different flawed work, and that's fair, but speaking personally, I like how the artwork in the new movie looks more like a Schultz drawing come to life with realistic textures rather than just some other artist trying to copy a Schultz drawing, which is what the specials always looked like to me. It's like the Lego movie, it's using CGI to pay homage to other techniques of art and animation while still pushing past the limits of what those other techniques can do. And both this and the Lego movie really make me retroactively disappointed in the look of the Tintin movie. Just do this in 3D, it's not that hard. And despite the 3D, most of the movie stays true to the traditional, familiar poses and angles and locations of the comic strips. The only place the 3D really goes overboard is, appropriately enough, in Snoopy's fantasy sequences. Whereas Charlie Brown's fantasy sequences actually go completely 2D, so... I guess reality is the midpoint between Charlie Brown's worldview and Snoopy's worldview. Something like that. I don't know. Am I reading too much into this? Probably. But what really matters in an adaptation is the story, the characters, the themes, and the tone. And one of the biggest concerns fans had going into this movie was that it would be too happy that Charlie Brown was going to be a winner. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind. See, the legacy of Peanuts has kind of split in two directions. The one side, let's call it the Hallmark side, focuses on the happiness is a warm puppy, sweet, fun, friends playing together, all happy, sometimes saccharine, you know, the whole, the, the part of Peanuts your grandmother likes. And then there's the bleak, depressing side, the cruelty among children, endless cycles of defeat, Charlie Brown is forever a loser side. The side where that warm puppy doesn't even remember the round-headed kid's name. And every fan tends to lean towards one side over the other, and the fans of the bleak side understandably kind of resent that the Hallmark side is the side that's always marketed and merchandised and really takes the general public uh, popular perception of Peanuts away from the depressing, tragic elements of it. But really, both of these sides have always been present in the strip, and despite Charlie Brown's failure and loneliness, he wasn't without his occasional victories and occasional support from his friends. Amidst the ridicule from his friends, of course. And as Schultz himself said, he never thought of Charlie Brown as a loser because a loser would give up. And that's really what this movie's about. This movie purports that what defines Charlie Brown is how he reacts to his failures, whether they're by his own hand or the result of circumstance. And his failures knock him down, and sometimes he gets pretty depressed over them, but he never stays down forever. He always eventually finds his way to try again. 
And his ultimate success comes not from any victory in any particular aspect of his life, but from being recognized for his tenacity. So yes, this film leans towards the optimistic side. And I know Charlie Brown's first feature film did not have an optimistic ending, and not all of the specials had optimistic endings, but some of the specials did, so it's not entirely off-brand for a Peanuts story to have a kind of happy ending. And I can't claim to know whether Schultz would have liked this version or not. Nobody can claim that. But his son and his grandson are probably a bit more qualified to assess his legacy than the rest of us are. So this isn't the bleakest manifestation of Peanuts, but nor is it the most saccharine. Every emotion, both positive and negative, is earned in the movie, and the characters are all true to recognizable versions of themselves. Obviously, it's impossible to encapsulate the full nuance of the 50 years of these characters' history in one film, but nobody is completely out of character as they were portrayed in at least one point or another in the strip. Really, the least faithful aspect of the characters' portrayal is the idea that Peppermint Patty, Marcy, and Franklin go to the same school as the rest of the kids which, as far as changes and adaptations go, is really not a big deal. And the film has appearances from nearly every character who recurred before Rerun was born. Even characters who had fallen off in later years, like Shermie and Frida and Violet and the first Patty. Even Five gets an acknowledgement. And almost every major running gag from the run of the strip makes an appearance, and as always, some of the dialogue is lifted directly from classic strips. And there's even a reference to a comic strip character who predates Peanuts, the character that Charles Sparky Schultz was nicknamed after. I thought that was a really nice touch. In a lot of ways, the movie can be seen as kind of a remake of You're in Love, Charlie Brown, with a little dash of Happy New Year, Charlie Brown. And rest assured that this film carries on many of the TV specials traditions, such as casting actual children as the voices, and using those wonderful Vince Guaraldi tunes, and even using archive recordings of Bill Melendez for the voices of Snoopy and Woodstock. Now, I didn't really think Megan Trainor songs were necessary, but they weren't too distracting. I mean, I don't think it's very peanutsy to latch on to current pop music trends, but on the other hand, it's Flash Beagle Charlie Brown exists. This wasn't nearly as distracting as that was. Now, not every Peanuts fan is going to love this movie simply because it is impossible to encapsulate a half-century legacy in a 90-minute flick. And so the film might not accurately reflect what Peanuts means to you. But I do believe that the filmmakers genuinely represented what Peanuts means to them. And the movie covered a lot of what Peanuts means to me. Not every single facet, but enough to leave me satisfied. Minutes after the film started, I felt tears of joy running down my face, and they stayed there for most of the movie. It was just so delightful to see these characters that mean so much to me, just the way I left them, maybe with a slightly updated look, but still doing what they do, and to see them on the big screen shared for a whole new generation. And... If it leads kids to crack open the old collections and discover the full emotional roller coaster that is Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Linus, Lucy, and everyone else, then this film will do its job. But that's just my opinion. Did you like the Peanuts movie? Did you dislike the Peanuts movie? Do you not even care about Peanuts in the first place? Which I don't understand, but I'd love to hear why. So let's discuss this down below. And until next time, this is Dave signing off.